There's a thing that I came across earlier in the week and I, I gave it to Roy and said, put together a segment on this. This is this is good stuff. And That's it's cool. A, yeah. yeah, it's about prominent astronomical names. Take it away, Roy. Yeah. So many of the stars that uh, we all can find in Elite Dangerous's galaxy map, um, they share prefixes in their name like LHS or LTT. And then there's a number or Ross. And then there's a number. And what you may not realize is, especially if you're relatively new to the game or astronomy in general, is that these are actual names of real life stars. And the prefixes refer to the real life star catalogs where the parameters of the star are recorded. Um, so, I, you know, that's interesting enough. But what was, I thought was really cool is a common way of detecting nearby stars that's been used for a very long time is to look for relatively high proper motions of the stars. And this is how several of the catalogs um, get grouped together. So, uh, for example, proper motion, a, a quick explanation of that as it applies to stars is that uh, over the course of centuries, stars appear to maintain nearly fixed uh, positions with respect to each other so that they form the same constellations that we name in the sky over historical time. You know, Ursa Major or Crux, for example, look nearly the same now as they did hundreds, hundreds of years ago. Um, however, precise long-term observations uh, have shown that the constellations change shape, albeit very slowly, and that each star has an independent motion. So this motion is caused by the movement of the stars uh, relative to our sun and the solar system. Uh, the sun travels in a nearly circular orbit, it's called the solar circle, around the center of the galaxy at a speed of around 220 kilometers per second at a radius of as many in the game know, around 26,000 light years from Sagittarius A star. And this can be taken as the rate of rotation of the Milky Way itself at this radius. So a common way of detecting nearby stars is to look for relatively high proper motions. And several uh, catalogs exist that are formed this way. Uh, Ross and Wolf catalogs pioneered this. Um, uh, at Yerkes, you know, Ob uh, Yerkes Observatory, Frank Ross, he was the successor to the late E.E. E. Barnard, as in Barnard Star, Barnard's Loop, inheriting Barnard's collection of photographic plates. So they used to take these pictures on basically glass plates with photographic solution. And he decided to repeat the same series of images and compare the results with a device called a blink comparator. So you can quickly move between the two images. And in doing so, he discovered 379 uh, new variable stars and over a thousand stars that had high proper motion. And some of these high proper motion stars turned out to be quite nearby. And many of these stars, such as Ross 154, still widely known by the catalog number he gave them. Uh, another series of catalogs, stars with prefixes in elite like LHS, LTT, LFT, those are from catalogs created by Jacob Leuten. He was born in Samarang, Java in the Dutch East, Indi uh, Dutch East Indies. And at the age of 11, he observed Halley's Comet. This started his fascination with astronomy. Um, the proper motion catalogs he created were grouped and named after the amount of proper motion observed in those stars. So LFT, a star whose prefix begins with LFT, is in the Luyten 5 tenths catalog, LFT. So that's stars with proper motions exceeding 0 0.5 or 5 tenths of an arc second annually. Similarly, LHS, that's for Luyten half second catalog. LTT is the Luyten 2 tenths catalog. NLTT, new Luyten 2 tenths catalog. So, uh, so far, there have been close to 800 different star catalogs used historically and into the present day, uh, with the catalogs from the European Space Agency's Gaia mission being the largest to date, containing almost 1.7 billion stars. But that's a story for another time. Right on. Good stuff. That is, uh, yeah, it, it, there's so many things like this that, honestly, I would never have bothered to learn if it weren't for the fact that I was an elite commander. And uh, I that's one thing that I love about elite is that it can instill upon you or in you the desire to actually go out and learn some science. That's that's some some real, real shit. And down to earth astronomy in the chat. This is also why we have rows of stars in elite. That is absolutely correct. Talking about the different 
movements. And, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, because as viewed from Earth, they <clears throat> sometimes couldn't get the distance to within less than a, a light year from Earth, and then they end up Guestimating. appearing in planes. We all are rounding. I don't know. They end yeah. up appearing in planes or, or walls of stars all grouped together. Absolutely. And, and you can see it in the game. Absolutely.